Hi everyone, it's me, Seth Dudetsky. It starts in the house. We have James and I have a kind of a big project coming up, but annoying style. It's a secret, can't really say what it is, but he's working on it. So I think he's gonna be able to be here halfway through the show. But I hate those like showbiz types that got a big announcement and make can't say here's the deal, you can't say it because you wanna always try to get the biggest platform. And if you kind of announce something early, then like the bigger platforms are like, we already heard about that. So anyway, that's why I'm not really saying what it is, but it's gonna, you you guys are gonna flip out. Um, especially those, especially those that grew up in the seventies. Not that I did. I was born 1989. Sounds. Anyway. Um, okay. Let me turn my here. So, um, yeah. Thank you, Juwan for laughing. Rude. Um, I could see, I could see your asses. Trevor, rude. Also you're British and I don't have to put up with it. Um, hi guys. So it starts in the house, which is the fundraiser. We, be we began mid March. We were raising money for the actress fund, which by the way, misnomer, the actress fund is for everyone for actors, singer, dancers, all that kind of stuff. But on top of that, anyone behind the scenes. So makeup artists, hair people, box office personnel, ushers, also anybody uh, in um, TV and film, which people always think of for theater folks, anybody in TV and film, script supervisors, camera people, concession, you know, the concessionaires, the amazing, the the evil, evil craft service table, where I always, whenever I've done TV, by the way, I've done like only five shows, but the the crazy deliciousness, the point is the Actors Fund can help you, actorsfund.org. However, when a week ago, we pivoted to the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. We've been raising money uh, for them since then. We don't know, how, we know we've raised $350,000 for the Actors Fund. We don't know how much we've raised yet for the NAACP. We're waiting for a tally, but you can donate right now. They're an LDF, by the way, Legal Defense Fund is amazing. Um, you donate right there. NAACP, oh, my dog, hold on. I literally have to let my dog out. Sorry, because she just ate. Okay, hold on. I'm back in a minute. Good girl. Mandy. Oh, God. She does this all the time. She barks. Mandy, go the hell out. Good girl. Mandy. All right. Sorry. I'm used to having James here. Stop judging. Stop judging. Anyway, um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So you donate. And um, NAACPLDF.org slash stars in the house. That's how we can keep track of it. Then once you donate, forward the donation to stars in the house 2020 at gmail.com and then I'll send it to one of the genies. And the last time um, we have, sometimes people will sing it, sometimes they'll sass it for acid. So this way, wah, 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 they'll like, they'll read your name and they'll sass it up. Crazy high kicks, tap dancing, what have you. NAACP, ldf.org slash stars in the house and then forward it stars in the house 2020 at gmail.com. Oh, that wore me out. Um, okay, we have a lot of comments already. Anything anything else to worry? Oh, thank you, still got it. Seth, ha. Thank you. Looking after the pups is home. Yeah, as soon as she eats, she wants to go outside. Um, okay, here we go. So this is the night of genies. We got, you know, we started this where we had like a, uh, what did I call it? A coven of alpha buzz. And then we had like a phantom fantasy. So tonight we have, actually, I don't know if we came up with a name for the genies. Did we? A genius of genies? I don't know. Um, all right, so let me welcome all these clowns. So who do I got first? Okay, I got Iglehart first because he was the first one that I spoke to. Here's Iglehart with the sassy... Um, Air traffic controller headphones. Hey. <laughs> What's up, Seth? How you doing? <laughs> yes, yeah, still got it. Big okay. Then, <laughs> so yeah. Then I have another three namer, Michael James Scott. Hi, Michael. Well, well, <laughs> Michael James Scott. I don't know who Michael James Leslie is. That we're all going across. The, okay. the Wait, what's going on? But Michael James that? Scott <laughs> is here. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the amount of times I had to correct that. Hold on one second. Oh. I, that is so funny. I said that brother changed his stage name. He said Michael James Leslie. Hold he on. Mike, <laughs> Michael James. How many T's? One T, right? Two T's. Two T's. S C O T T. <laughs> Michael <Okay>. James Scott. <laughs> okay, hold on. James Monroe. Okay, you all, you all got a cut. Okay, Listen, and then uh, you you brought us all together. This is a bad move, Seth. That's a that's I a lot. That's James, a lot of stuff in this in this, James on this camera. Also messaged me and said, "Did I take my husband's last name? Did, uh, you, did you change your last name? Last... <laughs> did you change your last name? So what's going on? Is that correct? Oh my! That, yes, there it is. There it is. That's it, boo. That is it. That is it. That's it. I that can't. Is, there she is. <laughs> there, there she is. is. Okay, then we have now wonderful. major. Major was having problems. I think he's having internet problems. I don't think Major, he keeps trying different devices. I think he's not working Major. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, where's your, your face at? 
Wait, wait but it's just your voice? <laughs> it's timid. <laughs> it's just your voice, man. <laughs> wait a minute. What is know. happening? Oh. Right now. He's oh, doing voiceover. God. Major's doing voiceover. I am a voice actor, so you That's know. true. That is very true. You're a voice actor. So we just if it's yes. just a black are you trying to like don't get I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna go there because you know what I'm, I was I'm, I'm, I protest twenty four seven. I was about to say you protest twenty four seven. He's, I'm like, he's, just, I'm I'm just, only... he's just pulling a black square. He's like, he's like, yo, I'm just I'm protesting on like, Seth. It's just, just, it. Yeah. He's like, I'm just putting a black square. Black squares. I'm calling it. I'm calling it. Heart. Did I spell your name right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. As long as there's no N, we're fine. Okay, you refuse oh. to look at the actual. Okay, I'll look in a minute. Okay, just get back to me. Donated NAACP LDF.org stars in the house. Forward to stars in the house. 2020 at gmail.com. Genie's right. in a bottle. Yes. Juwan Crawley. Yes. James Monroe, Eigelhart, Leslie. Now I'm Leslie. Now I'm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. You <laughs> <laughs> <These> idiots. <laughs> I can't. Who is Leslie? Who is how does he how does Leslie keep getting in here? (laughs) Leslie's that Leslie's that last genie who's been stuck in the lamp and like can't get out. Oh my god. They keep rubbing. They keep rubbing. Just keep rubbing, just not coming. coming. That's terrible. Just keep rubbing and not coming. That's great. That's a good that's a great line for that. And G rated. Okay, so uh, we're gonna see if Major's gonna show up. We'll see. It's gonna okay, be a so black square again. I know. Major. Black square. Okay, here we go. Just kidding. Ah, oh, wait, that's not what I meant to do. What's wait. up, David? Hold on. <laughs> I took everybody off. Everybody's gone now. Wait, no. what did I just okay? This is good. This okay, here we go. I can tell you this didn't happen to the alphabets. Why was it why on the black show? Why the when, when the brothers came oh, out, that's no when technical technique. difficulties. This. You know James, I think you're the instigator, so watch this. Mute. There we go. Ooh, I wish I could do that. <laughs> you can. Hey! Oh, there we go. See, now I gotta get headphones on. I'm the only one without headphones. Wait, hey. make your. Can you hear us? Yes. Can you oh, hear me? Left. James stormed out. Interesting. Ah. What a diva. Oh, now he's point. back. The bitch is back. Hey, James. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Every every time every time I'm muted, every every time I'm muted, I'm just gonna do this. Ah! Every time I'm muted, I'm just gonna, oh. gonna just, right, just mute. And you don't need you don't need sound. Pictures tell a thousand words. Oh, and this this is this just 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 because I'm being like that. This is the Grammy nominated medal that we get when you don't win one. They give you a medal. Said we didn't win the Grammy, but I show sure as hell got a medal for it. But Come on. <laughs> close to the Okay, bitches, let's go back to the beginning. So, <laughs> James, you're the one that started it all. Yes, so, which is you see why all this craziness is here. Yes, ma'am. So did you audition for the part where you just offered it? I don't really know the story. Maybe I do, but I forgot. Oh, no, they didn't offer me the part. They, they, they were seeing every brother in the world besides me. They saw every black person on, on Broadway, at least the brothers. And so I was in the last round. And I was only I was only chosen because um, a friend of ours that we all know, John Eric Parker, was talking to Casey Nicola. Casey Nicola said, I'm looking for uh, an African-American man to play Genie. And John Eric Parker, as well as Asma Rett and Jared Gertner, they all said, have you spoken to James Eichhardt? Casey's like, who's that? And he's like, he's in Memphis. You should go check him out. Casey came and saw the show. Next thing you know, my agent got a call because my agent told me she's the person is no longer there. But at the beginning, they're like, oh, James, they're just not... Um, just not seeing your, your type, you know? <laughs> Wait a minute. So you tried to get an audition? I tried to get an audition. They was like, they're just not, they're just not seeing. But is it your agent or was it the, or were the casting people really saying we're not interested? I don't think this particular agent really tried, if you really want to be honest, but hey. <laughs> and now wait, so then when you finally got the gig, was it peace out agent? No, she she did that person left our agency, but then that had that that was this was this was when we were doing the the pilot production for Seattle. This was they were yeah. Disney was just trying to see if this thing worked. This is before pilot. we had He's costumes so that stayed together. He's so Hollywood with those pilots. How dare you? How <laughs> <laughs> a workshop? How a workshop? You don't workshop. You put stuff on in a different city. 
that out of town tryout. There we go. That, 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 yeah, that, that was an out of town. Yeah. Okay, so you were so Monroe Aguilard, you were the first. Yes. So I want to know what everyone else's position is. Trevor, you're the West End genie. I was, yes. Um, so I was. Uh, you should go to MJ. MJ should be next. MJ's next because because he's next in chronological order. Yeah. MJL. Yes. MJL. MJL. <laughs> how did you How did you get associated with Aladdin? <laughs> MJ Leslie. Um, I well. So I actually also did not, I actually, the genie was never on my radar. And mind you, I also like, it just, I'm like, I was in the Broadway scene. <laughs> like I was in it and had been doing Broadway shows. So it was, but it was never on, it was never on the radar. However, Casey Nicola is um, a very good friend. We were doing Book of Mormon at the time. Um, that actually, that conversation happened while we were doing the, one of the, workshops of book of mormon um with uh and i actually remember that actually happening from john eric and john eric is one of my good friends and as Matt, as met it um <laughs> and uh so i actually got involved because james when they did that production in seattle there was a they decided to do a reading uh of the show that they were basically all the changes and everything that they had done in Seattle, they were gonna do it uh, in New York. They were gonna just do a reading of it. James was the only one he couldn't come back in. He was doing something, so he couldn't come to do that. So I got a phone call from uh, from my agents that Casey wanted me to come in and and play the genie for this, re this thing. Now here's the trick bag of it all because this is, I always give, he always puts, it's a trick bag. He did not tell me that on that Saturday before my two shows at 10 a.m. that it was going to be an entire situation of reading with microphones and executives and all of the things. <laughs> and so I learned the show in two days in Tom Schumacher's office with like with Adam, basically it was just sort of like, uh, and I'm so glad he didn't tell me all that because basically I just kind of just did. And so I, that's how I became, um, like that's how it all got involved. It was never that I was gonna, it was just, I was just gonna, James couldn't do it. So he asked me to come in and, and do it. And that's how, then he asked about would I be interested in standing by? So I was the original standby. Um, yes. And yeah. yeah, so I know, you, you know, I was used to being on stage. I was like, I don't know. And James and I had actually, for a long time knew each other yeah. and like we you know and so because of the respect i had for james and all of that i, I thought i mean i could do this because i'm like standing by for somebody you don't respect is not going to be easy for me <laughs> <laughs> true. at oil true. <laughs> so, so, so true. not with not, i'm like i'm like no no not when i can do it i don't right. know i don't right. know so that's how it that's how it happened and i i i i, I thought about the future and that's kind of that's how it all came about for me, um, you know, just sort of like a hey, would you be interested in in coming in to read uh, and 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 play the genie in this works in this reading? And, and, then Casey, and then Casey stole Michael to go to something's rotten, and they basically went across the internet looking for someone, look looking for someone, and they came upon Trevor. So. So I, my, my story was, was like real normal and then real weird. And so, cause Michael was getting ready to leave. So like I had gone in cause my agent was like, Hey, there's an audition for Jeannie standby. Um, we're going. And like at this point I had, so like in that first year I had watched the Tony's performance and I was like, Oh, Oh, I, I, I was like, I, I think I could do that. And so I cheated and I uh, had a video of the Tony's performance. And I learned as much of the tap from the Tonys that I could with a private tap teacher. Cause I was like, what I do not do is pretend tap dance. Like we all have done so many times on stage. We don't actually tap dance. Except for Michael. Tap dance. Except for, Except for Mike. Michael is a dancer. The only one, like <laughs> full on, like ready to go. Um, so like I, I got a private tap and like learned that. So then when like the, the, the actual audition came up, I was like, okay, cool, let's do this. And so like I was um, getting ready to go down to uh, uh, Jupiter, Malt Jupiter Theater to do The Wiz. And I went in for this audition and they were like, it went really well. And they were like, great, 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 great. Um, 
we'll be in touch, which we all know better than that. So I go, I take, the, get my flight, go down to Jupiter, and then there's this whole, this whole like, uh, like it's like right over Christmas, and then like New Year's happens, and then the agent, my agent calls me, he's like, hey, they want to have you back in for this, um, and I was like, oh, when? And it was literally on our opening night, and we have no covers, and I was like, I can't. I was like, there's no way I can, I can do that. Like we have no covers. So um, will they take a video? Which the, 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 the death nail of any audition process, will they take a video? <laughs> so uh, I do this video with, uh, with my boy Tyrek, who's playing uh, the, the, the Tin Man reading with me. And so I do the video, send it over. Um, and then they're like, great, we actually love it. We need you to come in on this day instead, which is a later day but still a day when I had a show. And I was like, I can't do that. Like the show's still running, I can't be there. And so then I got the like the, the agent phone call and they're like, oh, we're gonna have to go somewhere else and look in another direction and like all that. And I'm like, okay, so like I'm bummed. Um, so then like the day that I was supposed to be there, uh, that day I get a phone call from my agent and they're like, hey, um, so they did all the auditions, they had your video. And after they had like had everybody come through, Thomas Schumacher was like, is there, is there anything else? And they're like, well, we have this video of this guy, but he's doing a gig down in Florida, he couldn't come in. So he's like, let me see the video. They played the video, um, my video audition. And then his responses will fly him up on his next dark day. So on my, that next, so literally I did my Sunday matinee, um, went straight to the airport, uh, flew up, flew back to the city. Um, that Monday morning I auditioned and then was back on a plane flying back to Florida. And before I got back on the plane, I got the phone call um, from my agents that were like, oh, you got it. And so I was gonna be the new standby. And like, I burst into tears in the airport and like, there was a whole snowstorm, And so like flights were getting canceled. I was waiting in line to try and like get my flight changed so that I could get back to Florida to make my next show on Tuesday. And uh, and like the 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 agent at the counter is like, oh, it's okay, it's okay, we'll get you on a flight. I'm like, it's not about you. It's so like, <laughs> I, <laughs> so I that brought me into the Broadway company was to to replace uh, MJ as he was moving over to something rotten. Um, so I became the new Leslie, and then <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, uh, and that the joke summer, ah, uh, as a new Leslie, I see. <laughs> Um, by the time we hit that summer, um, they had, I got called up to Tom's office and then they asked me, Hey, how would you like to go open, uh, the West End production? Cause now there's a secret here that I usually don't talk about, but now since the West End production is closed, I can talk about it. So James had first right to refusal to come to the West End. James doesn't talk about this either. He had first right of refusal to come to the West End. And, um, once I got the once I got the uh, the thing, I was like, I have to talk to James because what we learned very quickly is that we got along very well. And like like uh, MJ said, it's it would be difficult to stand by for somebody you don't respect. But it was easy because it's like we felt like this this kinship initially, immediately when we met each other. And so like I immediately came to you and I was like, Yo, um, I know you were supposed to go to the West End. Are you cool with me going? And you're like, yes, absolutely. So I was like, then go, I'm saying go, yes. Go right <laughs> now. Get out. Go. Um, so I came, flew over, uh, opened the West End production, did uh, three and a half years here, bounced back to Broadway, bounced to the tour, bounced around. And then now my my uh, my time at the lamp has come to a close. Yeah. Hold on a second. So you're American, but they, yeah. let you, they had you open the West End. And are you still living in London? I'm still yes. living in London because now I'm doing, well, now none of us are doing anything. But <laughs> <laughs> I was doing, uh, I've been doing, I've been playing George Washington and Hamilton here post. That's been my post, uh, my post genie gig here in London. Okay, I, I had to talk to you about the difference between West End and Broadway, but let me finish all, all my others. So, Major, you were next, right? Up next, yes, sir. Okay, was, let's hear it. I was doing Hands on a Hard Body in Dallas, mm. Texas. Another role I originated, but we won't talk That's about that. That's part of my story. <laughs> All right, bye-bye. I don't like his attitude. <laughs> Shit. Oh. <laughs> you got me. You got me. So, yes, Major. Yes, I was playing a hand. I was in the Hands on Hard Body um, at Theater Three in Dallas, Texas, written by uh, Mr. Doug Wright. Um, he came to see our production of the show, 
because he is from the same area and this was happens to be his home theater so i'm doing the southwest premiere amazing are you After, from there are you from yes, there? born and raised so yes, is my husband. I'm so mad he's not here. He he's done so many shows down there. Oh man! Yeah. All right, actually, Talk about it. keep going. Keep well, going. Side note: We've met before when you sang with um, the Turtle Creek Corral, the men's chorus in Dallas. Yes, had one day that I was down there. Yes, sir. I sang Hardy back up for you. That was a giant. <laughs> that was yes. like yes. That was like an opera house. Where the hell was that? It was glorious. I can't remember the name of it, but it's a it's a church, I think, actually. Yeah. It was huge. Anyway, nice job. All right, continue. Please, thank you. Um, so uh, after the show, I talked to Doug, and he says, hey, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to be the genie in Aladdin on Broadway. Ask for what you want. And he says, did you know that Mr. James Monroe Iglehart was supposed to play Ronald McCowan in this show like you are now? But instead, he decided to go play the genie. And I said, well, isn't that a winky dink So... Uh, and there's a post, there's a post floating around Facebook right now. On the closing day of Hands on Hard Body, I took a picture holding the truck and I claimed it. I said, y'all, I'm letting you know now, I'm coming. Tell James I'm coming to join the cast of Aladdin. I also sat on my couch and watched the Tony performance. <laughs> and uh, unlike Trevor, I said, I'm going to do that. Taking them notes. I said, I'm going to do that. And then of all the people, I can, I'm very happy to say that I am the one who got to quit my name <laughs> after his on the uh, on the dressing room to begin with. That's true. Uh, getting in the show, sorry. Uh, Doug Wright, <clears throat> he says goodbye. And then two months pass and I get a email from him. He says, hey man, I had lunch with my friend Tom. Don't know if anything's gonna happen, but I dropped your name, casual conversation. Schumacher? My yes, friend sir. Tom? Uh-huh, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> My buddy Tom and I just shared a panini. Um, and he says, I don't know what will happen, but who knows? A month after that, I get a, an email with the entire packet from Babcack and Genie Standby. They say, hey, man, we heard some things about you. Learn this. Bye. They announced, <laughs> they announced, <laughs> auditions. About right. <laughs> they announced auditions for September 15, 2015. Um, I say, oh, and I, I reach out because I'm working with the Fort Worth Symphony Orchestra, biggest gig of my current life at the time. And I say, hey, guys, I can't make it. I have to do this. And they said, great, send us a tape. So, oh, no. <laughs> I sent a tape. They call back in an hour. And they say, hey, man, can you come next week for final callbacks? And I was like. Oh, they're so casual. Hey, man. All right, go on. Yeah. <laughs> so, kind of. I was like, but I just got, I got to do this thing. I just said I can't come. And then they called me back. They said, say, uh, uh, the two important people are going to be in the room. Tom and Casey will be in the room at the same time. It's rare. So pack you, pack you an overnight bag. So it flew me up, um, saw the show. First genie I saw on stage was not James, was not Trevor. It was Donnie. Ah, oh, you, saw Donnie. Yeah. you saw Donnie. Yeah, Donnie. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So um, the next day, uh, we spent all day auditioning, did my, my infamous high kick. And then uh, at the end of the day, I got the phone call. Before I went to bed that night, I was screaming in the hotel. So. <laughs> This casting process, I, I, I'm obsessed with, like, you find out the same day. Like, I'm still waiting to hear if I got Masterclass, which was cast 23 years ago. <laughs> um, I'm hoping. It's, it's All right, it's so like, on. Yeah. Yes, ma'am? It's on you, Joe. It's on you, Joe. Oh, Come on, hi. girl. Hi. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, I want. <laughs> <laughs> my junior year of college when the Tony performance happened. Shut up. And Ouch. I- Ouch. 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 So, Nobody needed that. So, well, because I, I was in Cape Cod and the Tony's Ouch. were happening and you, of course you happened. And then immediately my professor, the head of my department at heart called me and said, Juwan, there's a part that you must play. I don't know if you know James, but you must study him and you must graduate and you must do that part. And I was like, okay. And he kind of set up for me to do different roles that would prepare me for what the show was when I was still in college. Like I did Belize, I did Puck. I did a lot of stuff where I was the, you know, the magical narrator type being mm -hmm. of the production. 
And then, you know, it was my senior year of college and they were auditioning for standbys for the national tour and for the genie for the national tour. And I auditioned three times and they told me no. They said, your voice is too high. Um, I was 22, they're like, you're too young, 21. And um, they're like, so yeah, no, it's just gonna be a no, but thank you for coming in. And so I kind of just moved on. I was like, okay, you know, it's not, it's, it's not for me. That's all right. There's a lot in the world. I'll be fine. And fast forward, uh, maybe six months into Spamilton. Um, I left Spamilton to do a show in Philadelphia called Found. Right, and I remember. One of the ladies in Found is really good friends with, I want to say Casey Hushin. Good. Somebody's battery is a hundred percent. Yes, it um, is. And <laughs> it was also a bad actor. Keep your MacBook Pro. Pro. <laughs> and um, and sh she came to the show, and then I got called in, not for anything Gina related, but for Damien for Mean Girls. And so I went in for Damien, and I sang Rainbow High. And wait a minute, original key? Up a half step. Have you heard him speak? <laughs> Look, safest bet is up a half step. Yeah. A, a little more comfortable. <laughs> and um, and then Casey and Casey Hushin and Jeff Hushin were like, "You have to sing this for Casey Nicola and Tina Fey." And I was like, "Okay." And so I sang it for them. And Casey was like, "Well, you should be a genie, and we we need a genie." I was like, I j just want to be on Broadway. So <laughs> whichever one you want me to do, I I'm fine with. <laughs> and I got called for a final work session with Casey in his gorgeous Midtown like, working space. It is stunning. I was like, wow, this is success. <laughs> I'm not there. Um, and at the end of the, at the work session with him, he was like, so do you need to change the keys for the show? And I was like, huh? <laughs> I was like, well, we can, we can like figure it out like if we need to, Casual. but like, I, it's, you know, I just, whatever, we can, we can make it work, whatever we can make it work. And then that night I found out, uh, actually when I was getting into my genie costume at Spamilton, that <laughs> I, I got it. My managers and my agents called me and the whole cast, we were all backstage, we were crying and weeping. And um, and then yeah, and he was like, "Did you not know you got it in the room when I asked you if you needed the different keys?" And they'll tell you, I'm so aloof. My brain is as high in the clouds as my voice is, and so it just went right over my head. And um, I was like, "Yeah, no." And then I got it, and that's also how I got Kimmy Schmidt. Was that same audition? Okay, hold on. So you had auditioned for Aladdin. Who was the one that was like, peace out, we're not interested? That wasn't Casey. That was no, 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 no. That was just the like, a resident casting team. I love it. That happens well all done, the time. Well done, well done. Smooth move there, Juwan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> very, very, very diplomatic. Absolutely. Very. Casting. You should run for you should run for a uh, an, an elected office. No, <laughs> we just we just he just been in the business long enough to know not to name names at certain times. <laughs> That's fine. That's what's you a clarify. Hold on to him. So Casey was sort of what it's what happens all the time is like where have you been? And it's like you had audition, but just no one brought you to Casey. Yeah. yeah. And then when you say you were getting into your genie costume, you get into your genie costume, and your phone happened to be right next to you. Well, because we were backstage and it was in the middle of our spoof, and, and so. Our Dan Rosales was singing something as Lim and Well at, up front when I got the the call, and it was my agent who never calls me, so I answered, and that's very funny. <laughs> who never I called mean, me? Thank until you. it counts. Thank until you. it counts. Until it counts. <laughs> so, just for hold on, wait. Okay, so just in case everyone's fascinated with Juan's high voice, this is I, I brought this clip, Juan. It's when I we did concert for America, which is yes. My husband and I put together, we did it once a month, uh, started an inauguration day for Sierra Club, Southern Poverty Law Center, NAACP, National Coalition Against Domestic Violence and National Immigration Law Center. And this is our second one and Juwan is singing with Nora Shell and they both basically have the exact same range. Here's a little clip, enjoy. <laughs> Oh, 
That shit is high. Okay, so speaking of NAACP, let me just remind everybody, we're raising money for NAACP Legal Defense Fund. I'm curious if any of you have any experience with the NAACP. Have you guys joined? Have you ever called on them? Anybody in this in this crowd? What, Michael? Yeah, I've actually worked with, um, I've done stuff down in Orlando. Florida. I'm from Orlando, Florida, and there's um, stuff with the Urban League as well as the NAACP chapter down there with, you know, all kinds of like outreach programs. And, you know, I'm, I'm a huge education um, person and I'm, I'm a big believer in, in it starting. And I mean, we can get into all of that in terms of like the foundation of where we are right now. And I'm like, let's go back to the education of it all. Um, because if we really want to make change, that is where we need to be. So that is, that is, um, that's, that I've also been to like NAACP, um, uh, conventions and things that, that, have, that have happened over the growing up, which has, you know, been wonderful. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah. We, we think they're a great organization. Anybody else have any experience with NAACP or LDF? Uh, NAACP Bay Area. Um, since I was a kid, um, until I moved to New York, my mom always had me, you know, sing at their functions, and I was there, you know, just to support and be there and do what I had to do. Was if they, you know, wanted to call, I was like, cool, I'm there, you know, because they they had a very big connection with my church. So if my mom was there, I was there. And if my mom was singing, I was singing. So we were singing for the NAACP. <laughs> I'm gonna just for people that don't know the difference. Because they're the 501c3, NAACP Legal Defense, and, and by the way, it's Legal Defense and Education Fund, but it's called LDF. But anyway, it's America's premier legal, organi premier legal organization. And by the way, it was founded by Thurgood Marshall, who's got it going on, who had it going on. Premier legal organization fighting for racial justice through litigation, advocacy, and public education. LDF seeks structural changes to expand democracy, eliminate disparities, and achieve racial justice in a society that fulfills the promise of equality for all Americans. They, like, they're really a great organization and yeah. literally donate whatever you want. I mean, whatever you donate, I love that I'm getting emails already. Just donate and forward the receipt, like five, 10, 20, it, it all helps. A lot of people are being arrested right now for peaceful protesting and like LDF is really helping people with that. So I would love some more donations, thank you. We're gonna take a medical break. We have a chief medical correspondent from CBS that always comes here. Give us some COVID updates. So everybody, everybody take a break. Um, okay, so you'll be back in two minutes. Eichelhard, go get your Tony. Juwan, warm down, warm down, a half step. <laughs> Trevor, work on that accent. British, it's I so will. thick, British accent. <laughs> Major, you can hear me finally. <laughs> and Ms. Leslie, you'll be back. <laughs> and we have our chief medical correspondent, Dr. John Lapook. How are you doing, Hi. Seth? I'm good. You know, I just saw someone... Facebook, like, why are there more hospitalizations in Arizona, but not Florida? And I was like, huh? And then I looked it up and there are more hospitalizations in Florida. It is, it's happening everywhere where people are going into phase two and three, but hospitalizations are going up. Am I correct? Yeah. It depends on where you are in the country. So t today I think, um, you know, my philosophy has always been, you, you're, you guys are all of you out there. You're smart enough to figure this out yourself so that instead of just, you know, the whole, rather than giving somebody a fish, teach them how to fish. So this morning, I went on a website that Johns Hopkins has. I want to read you some stuff, and I want to explain why it's so important to tell where in the country things are getting better or worse. The title of it is All State Comparison of Testing Efforts. It's Johns Hopkins. I hate to do this, but I'm going to do it. It's coronavirus.jhu.edu forward slash testing, forward slash states, dash comparison, force forward slash testing, dash state, dash weekly, dash change. Okay. So since that's now not here, helpful, go on. Figure that out. Um, you can go back and hear that. And the reason why I think it's so important is it is a state by state comparison of what percentage of their testing, this is up the nose testing, you know, back of the throat to see if you actually have coronavirus. What percentage of the tests are positive? Mm -hmm. So you, you've you heard some arguments saying, well, yes, the number of cases of coronavirus is going up, but that's just because we're testing more. But the fact, if you're in a place where the percentage of positive tests is going up, then that's a warning sign that there could be what's called community spread 
or that there's more spread in these areas. So I asterisk some places. Last week, um, two, so two weeks ago, Washington was 3.5%, but is now 6.9%. The state? Uh, Washington, Not the state. It's Washington state, yes, because it just says Washington. It doesn't yeah. say D.C. I'm not 100% sure because it's just saying Washington. So let's put an asterisk next to that. Arizona, though, which is definitely a state, two weeks ago was 10.3%. Now is 13.8%. So that's a 3.5% increase. Massachusetts went down. Two weeks ago was 11.2%. Now is 4.7%. That's percentage for every 100 times they do a test. How many of them are positive? So Amazing. in New York, that's gone down and down and down and down and down. You know, at the beginning, it was like 70 percent. And now it's down and down and down and down. And that's a sign that in that area, there are fewer and fewer cases because you're testing more people. But a lower percentage is positive. I know that's math, but I think everybody can do this one. Um, South Carolina uh, two weeks ago was 4.3 percent is now 10.5 percent. Texas, two weeks ago, was 6.9%. Now it's 7.4%. Now, that's positive tests of people who are be testing positive. It doesn't tell you how sick they are. What we have to now look at is exactly what you started off with, which is hospitalizations. And I think at the end of the day, when people said, well, we had this big Memorial Day weekend, but we really didn't see a bump. Well, let's just think about that. Memorial Day was a couple of weekends ago, right? It's an incubation period of two to 14 days. So if you got infected at Memorial Day, you could have turned positive as, as much as two weeks later. Then remember the way COVID-19 works? And I saw this myself. The first week, you may be somewhat sick. And then there's a second week crash where you get really sick. It could be as long as three weeks after you're exposed that you end up in the hospital. So I am very concerned right now about spikes in this country. And you saw the stock market tanked about 1,800 points today because they're concerned too about spikes. So this is not magic. You know, we can't have magical thinking now. You've heard me say a million times, we have to embrace science. Yes. But say it again, when you're outside, wear the face masks. Yes. It's a sign of respect. And you also may protect yourself somewhat, but it's really protecting other people from you. And Watch hands. But John, it's like you said, it's protecting by the way our nurses and doctors and EMT people who are working so hard and trying to protect themselves. The more people that come into their hospital with coronavirus, the more they're going to get sick and they have no choice but to go to work. It's so disrespectful. Yeah. Continue. Sorry. It's got to drive me crazy. You're exactly right. And, you know, you, you on the one hand, you do understand people are fatigued with, you know, with staying at home. I get it. But take a deep breath and, um, you know, somebody made an analogy of in World War II, um, remember in London, they had the blackout shades yeah, so that the, the Nazis didn't see where to bomb. What if somebody left their lights on? Right. Right. You know, it's not uh, my freedom is being encroached upon because you're making me use blackout shades. I have the freedom to use lights. Right. And then your city gets bombed. I agree so, with you. You know, we're, we're really I know you've heard it a million times. We are all in this together. This is serious, folks, and I know we want to be through this. We're not through it. We're maybe the end of the beginning, um, but we still have a ways to go. There's lots of good science going on. We are going to get through it. I totally know that. There's beautiful work being done with vaccines, but we can't rely on it. We don't know what's going to happen, and right now mitigation, that fancy schmancy word that means stopping spreading it to other people, that's the way to go. And the one thing I wanna just um, say, my little clinical pearl is, if you're indoors, I know the CDC says, wear a mask if you can't be within six feet, if you can't be farther than six feet from somebody. But if you're in a closed in a space and the ventilation isn't good, why not open a window and open a door and just get the air going? Because you're gonna see in the weeks and months to come that, and we're seeing it now, more and more data that these tiny little droplets can dry out and float aerosol, little airborne spray across a room. What we don't know is how infectious they are because the aerosolization is a very, a very tough process on the virus, fortunately. But why not layers of protection, right? Mask, thinking about are you vulnerable? Outdoors is better than indoors. 
um, wash your hands, don't touch your face. This is all stuff. It's, nothing's going to make you 100% protected, but you really can, percentage-wise, you know, make your chances, make your odds better. All right. I love everything you said. And um, as Jason said, we love Dr. LaPook. Well, wait a second. Wh where's James? Oh, I said, but we're working on a secret project, which I can't announce, but he's working on it. But we'll announce it soon. Okay. <laughs> also, I killed him. All right. Anyway, thank you, Dr. LaPook. <laughs> Exactly. Was that what am I am I on film? All right. See you tomorrow as usual. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Always see bring you. me vaguely down. All right, peace out, but vaguely up at the same time. All right, I'm gonna bring back McClowns. I got um Mr. Juwan, a little Trev action. Um, let me see. Where is Mage? Where's Major Minor? It's gone. Major through. Minor, Michael James. I'm not gonna say it. And James Moreau, Leslie. So <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> yes. Wow. By the way, thank you. Wow, Seth. Dark humor. Well, come on. Where's James? Everyone, I, part the, most people think I killed him. Anyway, so <laughs> I, I want to talk for a second. James did my show. I, did, I was raising money for the um, for arts in schools because it's being cut everywhere and it just it drives me up a wall. And James did my show called Not Since High School, where you recreate roles from um, when you were a kid. And I love that this is like kind of even before there was non-traditional casting. I love talking about the role you played as a kid because there really is, we really have to open up Peter's mind about non-traditional casting. Like, and I, I always mention this, like when I did Les Mis back in the nineties, I was like, where are the black people? And everyone was like, there were no black people in the French revolution. I was like, right, there was no orchestra in the French revolution. So I'm not worried about the accuracy. It would drive me crazy until my friend Fuchsia Walker got cast. But anyway, my point is, I love that you were cast. Talk about the role that you played as a kid and how it went over with the other kids. Uh, quickly, I was I was uh, in musical theater most of my life and the, the show choir people decided, they said, hey, the theater department is doing a musical. You should be in it. And I, they said, they're going to do Little Shop of Horrors. And that was the only reason why I did it. Because usually high school theater, at least in my neighborhood, was terrible. And I was like, I am not doing I Remember Mama because it's a boring play. I don't care what anybody says. Write me, t text me, whatever. Um, I like that play. It's fine. She has goulash at the end. I don't really care. Um, <laughs> so it's <laughs> <laughs> I um, so they, you know, they, uh, they said they were going to do a little shop of horse. So of course, you know, I got all excited because I want to be the plant. Why not? Then all of a sudden, they get there and realize they don't have no black people. There you go. Which is also another question, but that's high school. So they say they want to do um, "You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown," and I say, "Great! I, if they're going to do that, I want to do Snoopy because that's the that's the role." So you know, shout out to Roger Barton. Also, shout out to my little sister Annalisa because she got to play the role. And so I'm thinking I'm going for Snoopy. I go in and um, I end up getting Charlie Brown, and I am upset. I'm upset and scared because I'm like one. Um, I don't want Charlie Brown because he's the straight man in the whole show, and two. I don't know if they know, but I'm black. And I was really worried about how people were going to react. But what I found was that, um, as we are finding now, education is one thing and how you are taught, you know, is something else. Adults, when I got on stage, looked at like, oh! and kids didn't even react. Children did not react. The young people did not react. Everybody that was like, you know, 15 and down didn't react. They were like, oh yeah, Charlie Brown, cool. And once the parents around the building started noticing that the kids were really into it, and I was wearing, you know, the yellow shirt with the little yeah. black line and the black shorts and everything. And the kids were like, that's Charlie Brown. And it was kind of fun because that's the same, that's the same energy I got when I played Genie. When the first time we walked out as Genie, everybody was like, how are you gonna have a black man play in the Robert Williams part? And then I started doing it and all of a sudden the whole room was like, oh, I guess you can. And it's, it's really about people opening up their minds. But what's funny is it's amazing how adults are stuck in their ways. Mm -hmm. And children don't look at it that way. Children mm -hmm. don't know race until you teach them. So uh, I mean, literally, it's such a it's such a classic. You've got to be carefully taught example, but it's completely true. Yeah. Uh, so I literally last week, Iglehart was gonna be on the show. I made him a piano accompaniment track, and then <laughs> we're moving into this week. So Iglehart, I want you to recreate your children's role. My piano playing was I would not say it was at my best. So just I got I got the I got the track, but I'm gonna tell you like it's been like fifty thousand years since I sang this, so I have the words. So people are like, how come he's not looking at the camera? Because I'm looking at the words. <laughs> That's fine with me. As long as you make the good acting choices. I okay, will do awesome. my best because I, I have these four to judge me and I don't feel like getting it like on America's Got Talent. <laughs> should I leave the pictures? Should I leave them on the screen? Please leave the people? brothers on the screen. Let them do what they want. I can't see them. I'll be looking at the music. <laughs> All right, guys, get ready. <laughs> Here we go. Let's try it. <laughs> 
little more speed, little more rope, little more wind, little more hope. Gotta get this stupid kite to fly. Gotta make sure it doesn't snag, doesn't droop, doesn't drag. Gotta watch out for every little whoops. Little less speed, little more tech, little less rise, little more slack. Gotta keep my wits about me now. Gotta make sure it doesn't get the best of me till I get it in the air somehow. Millions of little kids do it every day. They make a kite and poof, it's in the sky. Leave it to me to have the one fool kite who likes to see a little kid cry. Little less talk, little more skill, little less luck, little less more will. Let us split this fellow eye to eye. Now that I've seen you chasing moles, climbing trees, digging holes, catching your string on everything passing by, why not fly? <sighs> Wait a minute, what's it doing? It isn't on the ground, it isn't in a tree, it's in the air. Look at that, it's caught the breeze now, it's past the trees now, with room to spare. sight and I'm not just a clumsy guy if I really try I can really fly a kite no I feel hard that song got me into college. That song actually got me into college. Uh, Only boom. Michael hated it. How dare you? Of course, you know there's always going to be a Simon in the group. <laughs> boom. You know what I think is funny? What I what I think is funny is that um, with the with everything that's been happening this week, it's been hard to find something to smile about. Mm -hmm. It's been hard to find something to be to lift you up. And so, yes, I, we all have. We've all gone through the songs that like keep us in the trenches and keep us strong in this, in this fight for our blackness, for our maleness, for our transness, for our gayness, for our black, of all of that. But then there's that moment where you kind of need something just to lift you out, something that'll make you smile. Because if you are on that energy of like just pissed offness, you get so tired. You get so tired of having it on your shoulders. You gotta take a, a moment to laugh, to smile, so that you can get back on the road to do what we have to do. Mm. If we are constantly just like angry, 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 now don't get me wrong, we are not going to stop being angry. We, will not, we won't stop being angry for a while, but there's a moment where we need to take us a moment to like smile, to laugh at something, to remember that yes, this is terrible. This is absolutely ridiculous and stupid and finally people are listening, but our lives are not awful. The five of us have been on Broadway. We have made roles. We have gone through crap with racist people, whether it be writers, directors, producers, fans, fans who will see us leave the theater and think they know who we are and grab their person. And, oh, right, you're the genie. So it makes it different. You know, people see, they, they see us on one side of the the on one side of the street and when we get on the other side of the street, they treat us differently because they didn't remember. Or, or the great one is all five of us, none of us, if you look at us on camera, look alike, but every one of us has been called either James or Michael or Juwan or Trevor or Major, basically saying the brothers look alike. We do not. We are amazing, powerful, strong brothers and talented. And we have used our talent and hopefully and I'm pretty sure I can say this with with the utmost honesty. Young folks, young brown, young brown round brothers have seen us. Mm -hmm. Young brown gay brothers have seen us, and said, "Oh my God, I can do that." You can look at the at the at the trajectory of of me being on all the way to Jawan being in college, mm. and saying, "I can do this." So, me singing a song called "The Kite" is just a moment of lifting, just a levity just for the for a hot moment before we get back on this train that says we still have work to do and it's and it's amazing to be in that position all of us have been in that position as genie 
and then had to go, yes, I get it. Because it's, it's amazing the part we're playing. We're playing the part of a slave who has to give out wishes and may not be able to go back. And at the end, yes, thank you. Finally, Aladdin says, cool. But we all have had to say that line, master, all of us. I remember Michael James Scott and I, we had this discussion. There was a moment, we won't say what, there was a moment that that line may have been taken out. And I said, I'm gonna keep saying that. And Michael looked at me and said, I'm gonna keep saying that. And then I remember a young brother in London saying he was gonna keep saying that. And what's funny is on Broadway, that line is in because it needs to hit. It needs to, yes, it's a Disney show. Yes, it's a family show. But people need to understand what is going on. What is going on? And we get the moment, the power to play this role and to show not just the white folks who come and check out the show, but show those people of color that we are all, we are not always on the river. We are not always on the boat. We are not always, you know, in chains. We could play these roles that are bigger, magical, but still have that that little moment of saying, yo, there is a little bit of reality in this. <laughs> Genie is smiling, but he is smiling because if he doesn't smile, he might cry. But he takes his magic and does what he can. And once he has that moment to be be out, you notice he don't come back to the bows. Once he has a moment <laughs> to be free, be, peace, out, you know, but. That's just me on my soapbox, but you know, thank well, you for letting me sing the yes. song. Everyone's loving it. The amount of comments. I mean, yeah. I'm, and, I'm, I'm, and I'm proud of these brothers. I mean, these, it's, it's not easy to one, do that role, but it's not easy to, it's not easy to do that show in a Disney show, knowing what folks feel sometimes about Disney. And it's not easy doing that role when other brothers who, Sometimes it's jealousy or sometimes other things want to do stuff. And it's not easy when white folks feel, oh, we should be doing that. It's like, mm -hmm. no, you, you shouldn't. I got that role. They got that role. And that role is like that. It's written like that. And it will be like that. So, yo, you, you were talking about roles you can't play. I would love to be an assassin, but no brother's been crazy enough to try to kill a president. So I don't need to do that role. But. You know, every other, I could, we could be Sweeney, we could be Fanny, we could be whatever. And the, the, what's funny is I'm the oldest, but the brother with the most Broadway credit is Michael James Leslie right there. He's, he's, <laughs> he's, been, he's been in so many shows. Everything. And he's everything. been in everything. And always had Working. dignity, always had dignity and amazingness with hashtag <laughs> Leslie. <laughs> It's it's been it's been fun to be his friend and watch how he conducts himself on Broadway, as as a leader to let us mm. uh, let the brothers know how we're how we are supposed to conduct ourselves whether it be a negative situation like many times I've I had issues and I would call I'd talk to Michael say yo what should I do he's like okay boo relax <laughs> I was like you're right that's true but what is, no, what you're, well what what you're saying is what everyone keeps saying on this show is that it's really important to have uh, people. To have diversity because we were I was talking the original Richie in a chorus line, and his first line is, you know, my name is Richie and I'm black. And he never felt comfortable saying it, but he had no one to turn to and say, should I say it? Should I not say it? No one would like him. So so that's the most important thing is to have diversity everywhere on the on yes. the staff and on the cast. You have people to talk to. And up the food chain, up the food chain yes. into into production offices, into yeah. company management offices. Finding so that we chain. always feel like we have uh, a reflection of what we may be feeling to speak to, to feel comforted by, to, to reach out to. And it's important. And if there's anything that I think we all find is lacking, it is the, uh, keeping the numbers for that diversity going, where it's not just the people you're on stage with. It's, it's, going, through, it's going through all the veins and all the organs of the, the industry itself. And that's where we need to continue to diversify. For me, it's even farther in, in sorry, diversity is as more as inclusivity um, mm. for me because it, we are, I mean, diversity is a very broad term. Diversity is, you know, we need more, we need a red redhead, we need a, a, a <sighs> you know, I'm like, that's, that to people, they say diversity. Um, and that to me is not what I'm talking about. I am talking about inclusivity, meaning including us at the top and before. So for me, it's a, it's a, it is a, that's a really important narrative that I, I, 
try to make sure that it, it, it's a part of it and, 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 and to be empowered to be able to, you know, say something. I mean, as James said, I mean, all five of us have been given a gift to be able to have gotten to play this role. And part of it, uh, part of the bit, like the sort of like, oh, on your back of it yeah. is this notion that you kind of become, whether you like it or not, um, uh, you become uh, the, the representation of <laughs> <laughs> of a lot of things, um, and yeah. so it it is quite an interesting thing to take on. And really, really, you know, on a, I never, ever, ever, ever expected to like have it be th like what was what was going to happen when they were going to show a black man's face on billboards and buses and all the things in Australia. Mm -hmm. I never expected like what I was going to receive from that being my, my like it was never, ever, ever. It never, I never expected. Why, what did you, what, what, what did you receive? It was, it was like, oh my God, the change. Oh my God, do you know what you're doing? Oh my God, you know, like, this has never ever happened. I mean, we're talking about Australia, so it's a very different, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, uh, place. And so, just in terms of like the, uh, I don't think I really realized the racial, um, uh, how like how much like how far down the racial uh, thing is deep in Australia in terms of not talking about it. <laughs> mm. um it's pretty it's pretty it's pretty it, it's quite in, in, interesting but that entire country embraced me which is really interesting i mean i had some incidents that were of course were questionable yeah. but mm. um you know to go back to my country go back to africa go back to um you know uh many things i'm like p.s a lot of people are actually from africa but okay um <laughs> so <laughs> but um but I did not expect that, and I think all of us, in a in our own ways, have definitely had to take on that kind of a thing, you know, mm -hmm. in certain in certain aspects that we just never ever <laughs> like experienced and thought would happen. There are moments, and I know all of us have experienced where um, my wife always laughs because you know she's Caucasian, but that when you play a role like this. Um, People, some pe kids are great. Adults don't know what to say to you. Mm. So you get done with a show and someone will say, oh my God, that was amazing. Do that cartwheel again. I'm like, did you just ask me to do a cartwheel mm -hmm. outside? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you even thought, did, did you think before you spoke? Did you think before you said it? And, or, or a guy who uh, literally, uh, Major knows this, had a picture of Major, a picture of Major in his no. hand walks up to me and says, would you sign this? Because you took a picture with my, my, my daughter. And his daughter looks at me, and I'm taller than Major. And the daughter looks at the picture, looks at me, and I tried to explain to the guy, I said, that's, that's not me. And the guy says, no, it, it's got to be you. And I was like, it's got to be me? I said, no, I'm sorry. I said, that's my friend, Major Attaway. He's the genie right now. I said, I don't think you want me to. I can sign the back, but that's not me. And the whole we we're at we're at Hamilton and everybody's surrounding this man. They're all looking at him, mm -hmm. and it was just one of those moments where it's like I could get ugly and crazy, or I could just be. He's already feeling it. Let me just let. It, hey, brother, um, <laughs> yeah, this is one of those. Her. This is one of those great times where, no, we don't all look alike. And <laughs> this will probably teach you. This will probably teach you to think, think before you speak. Mm, mm. And did the daughter did, did the daughter the, go lift oh. every boy? What <laughs> 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 is that? What happened? Oh, hey. It kind of it, 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 you can see you can see she had a whole new appreciation. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure she went home and just watched a whole day of own and just yeah. you know, educated herself. Huh? You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Listen, back uh, BET. BT yeah. and BT. Right she watched the BT Awards specifically. Right. Um, no, it's 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 uh, it's a wild ride because you get um, like with those interactions with people who who see something you've done and feel entitled to a certain uh, box to place you in. 
And yeah. so I like with the again and Michael with you as well with the the idea of experiencing it in a different country that you're not used to and experiencing these different these different approaches to the racism that we encounter um, the micro and macro aggressions both built into that. Okay, so in that first year of uh, being the genie here in London, I also appeared on the uh, Royal Variety performance as Santa Claus, as, as, as a black Santa. And so I knew going into it, it's like, there may be some, <laughs> some, some pushback. What I did not anticipate was the, uh, the online storm of, of blatant uh, hatred uh, that came flying. And it's like all this aggression uh, about how Santa can't be black, Santa can't appear this way. Santa Claus, uh, who, mind you, is, spoiler alert, is a fictional character, fictional. Uh, <laughs> cannot appear as this black man on television. But I did, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that moment, and I'm proud that there may have been, the thing was that kids didn't care. You could literally see the kids in the audience who didn't care if Santa appeared, and they're just like, oh, Santa Claus is here. This is the only thing that matters. And then you see, I mean, I also met, I literally met uh, Prince Charles dressed as Santa Claus, which is a very odd, uh, a very odd experience. Um, but I have, a, I, have a, <laughs> I have a photo of me meeting Prince Charles while I'm in full, <laughs> I'm in full Santa outfit, beard, hat, everything. And also the Santa outfit like lit up and like had like LED lights all in it and stuff. And I had a whole dance number in it, but I met Santa. I met, I met Prince Charles dressed as Santa, but the, the children, there was no question. Everybody was, was the guy's daughter just looking at you like, you're just, you're just, you're just who you are. Right. You're just who you are because there hasn't been at that point enough influence to, 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 to change that opinion and to yeah. change the way that we perceive other human beings, especially human beings that we see are performing for us. And we just, as opposed to just taking in what they're giving on the stage and, uh, and passing a judgment on it, which seems counterproductive. I've got Juwan, Oh, go Major. I want to ask Juwan too, but Major, you talk. I've gotten messages in my inbox from all over the world saying, Major, we just saw the show. You were fantastic. I was only in the Broadway cast and in mm. the touring company. <laughs> but I have messages from Australia. I have messages from London, everywhere. Singapore, all the places. Yeah. Hey, you did great. Yeah. You know what? Right. Fan mail is fan mail. What? Right. Um, <laughs> yours, or, mine, everyone's. Yeah. Or, or the opposite. In Fort Worth, Texas, I played Frosty the Snowman. In this version of Frosty, they put me in an all-white suit. Whited my hair. So I was essentially reinventing Remus, which is fine. But you see the show, and then like you see the parents. Either the white family is taking a picture with me after the show, or they're writing a letter to the theater yeah. saying, let us know the next time you want to muddy up a childhood classic. Yeah. yeah. Aggression. <laughs> it's such a waste of energy. So one of the reasons I'm asking you is because you know, we have a 19 year old and I do feel the younger generation, not even just kids, but like people your age, I feel it's very different. Do you, wh what's been your experience with racism and, and your peers, especially being your age? Cause what are you now, 23 or something? I'm 25 now. Oh, oh forget it. Damn, took you long. Oh man. No, you know oh. <laughs> no, I think that in my generation, there is for better or worse, so much self-involvedness huh. that a lot yeah. of the stuff has, you know, brushed off of brushed off of us because it wasn't until we got these big global calls uh, to change that we would pay any attention to anything really outside of ourselves. I mean, I grew up in a really really comfortable family, and I was taught really kind of, and they did it. And it, there was nothing ill will about it, but they taught me to be the most acceptable version of what a black man can be. And that in wow. truth really helped me wow. navigate my life and my career um, in a way, but it was to a point where I really didn't realize I was black, like honestly, until it was time for me to go to college. And I, I had just always grown up around predominantly white communities. And I had, I mean, very young, I had instances of racism. 
I went to a private school for most of my life. I had nuns erasing chalk in my face, giving me asthma attacks. Um, you know, I've been many times one or two of the black students in my class. Um, but it didn't really register that that was happening to me because I was black until I got kind of outside of Connecticut. And Connecticut is a very, very, uh, they've mastered uh, the liberal racism, the microaggressions, mm -hmm. the redlining, the, oh, you're so, so uh, articulate. You speak so well, mm -hmm. you are. So, so. I would have never th you know, that, that type of racism is prominent in Connecticut. Uh, and I wasn't really aware of that until I went somewhere where I was experiencing people from other walks of life who had dealt with outright uh, racism. Um, and I mean, I think that, you know, my generation, we still deal with it every day. I mean, the, the fact of the matter is, is that this is ingrained in the society. So the effects of it may only vary in the, the way they manifest, but I don't think necessarily in the amount of which they manifest. It just finds different ways to happen. Um, but yeah. I've, I've been rather encouraged uh, the past week, I've been on a lot of protests and you know, the, every protest I've been to has been mostly white people and mostly other people of color. Um, and it really, really brings me hope uh, to see mm. so many people, and everyone is affected by it. Uh, it. People don't realize it, but everyone is affected by it. Um, so, you know, to see so many people who are not so aggressively affected by it, um, or people who benefit from it, putting themselves out there uh, to protect us, to fight for us. Mm. I, I always say, you know, racism is not a black issue. Racism is a white issue. We do not benefit from this. We did not create it. We, it, and it's one of the only times in my life I've ever seen a situation where the victims are the people who also have to do the fighting to save themselves. Yeah. Um, and I, I, at least in Brooklyn, that's <laughs> not the energy. It's, it's very clear. <laughs> and you know, in Brooklyn, they'll send the black protesters home a little earlier. The protests happen in shifts, uh, back when the curfew was happening. Uh, because, you know, the the police, although after the curfew were still extremely violent, were less violent with white bodies. Um, they have white shields at protests where if the police get crazy, they'll say white shield and all the white people will get in a circle around the people of color and the cops will just stop. It's the most wow. enraging. And also right. it's, it, it mm. gives me such hope for the people who are with me but also like, so it's so crazy to me that that works. Um, so it's it's still there, I think, and very prevalent. It's just there in ways that are more subversive and I think sometimes more comfortable for people to, to live with. Juwan, um, this is crazy because you and I, we we chat, we kiki, and we'll like, we'll like have our giggles and stuff, but I've never, um, we've never shared that experience of growing up in primarily white communities because I grew up in Morgantown, West Virginia, and it was primarily white community um, to the point where my mother and I just talked about this like a few days ago, where just the, the, the fear of racism and dating, like as I started dating, as I started dating girls, it was like they were they were white girls. And she was like, because my oldest brother had had the same experience. And so there's this like the the anyone I dated in like middle school, high school, I had the same issue every time. And it was, uh, it was a, it, it's, it's not that it didn't hurt, but it was less effective each time. For each time I'd be like, oh, I'm, I'm dating this girl. And then her parents would be like, no, he's black. And then they would see me in a show and they'd be like, oh, but he's so articulate, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, it happened repeatedly. And it's like some of those relationships uh, shifted and like some of them didn't, but it was just such a a uh, 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 slap to uh, being allowed to to feel your blackness, like like feeling shamed 
uh, for the color and being like, well, but you're able to to operate uh, in a way that we find acceptable. You so make we'll us let money. You, we'll yeah. let you in. We'll let you in. Um, yeah. And well, like it's it's I don't I don't carry resentment for that now. Um, I, I would like to hope that those parents have fur further educated themselves, um, have have better their understanding of uh, the type of the type of hatred and the type of damage that can do to a to a young kid. I was a kid. I was like early teens, like, and that was my experience uh, going out of the house and interacting with people. And it's just, um, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised we didn't, that we shared that experience growing up in a primarily white community and uh, having this, this almost uh, because we, we are articulate, mm -hmm. uh, where we're, we're, our, our blackness is, is shaded from the, the people around us and like, Ugh. I think what's funny is um, when you get to this level, you know, Seth, when you get to this level, all five of us are, are on Broadway. All five of us are um, professional. You know, we finally we finally made it. And it's amazing how all of us have gone through the same situation of we had to learn how to navigate and to be non threatening. Right. Not exactly. that any of uh, any of us are threatening, but there's a certain way that you speak or act so that you are not perceived as mm -hmm. threatening. And then when you do that, there is always a moment of someone on stage or at a event or at somewhere where you are prominent, where there is some person who has to say something. And it could be something slight. It could be something small. And you're just like, okay. they have to remind you. They, they, get, they got to remind you. And, mm -hmm. and, and the fun part is some of them know it and some of them don't. And those mm -hmm. are the scariest ones because they don't know. They just assume because we're actors and we're black actors. So you could just say anything <laughs> and you're like, mm. you know, and we yeah. have to, and we, and we, we do that head tilt and we do that look. My. And all of a sudden they get that feeling like, oh, I might have said something again. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. I'm not going to say something to you now because we're surrounded by people. But if we're outside by ourselves, <laughs> we might have a conversation. Mm -hmm. And that's a conversation you, know, you don't want to have. It's just interesting how, how nothing changes. We had Mary Wilson on. But Mary Wilson and Leslie Uggams, basically everyone said they had to be better than anybody to just be on the same level as anybody. So you always had to really excel, just be considered the same. And Mary Wilson was talking about touring with the Supremes and Little Stevie Wonder, they were in a pool in Georgia. Everybody got the hell out of the pool, all the white people did. And then on the radio, they were saying, the Supremes are here, Little Stevie Wonder. And when everyone's like, oh my God, they're famous, they all flocked back to the pool. I mean, it's like, and that's the 60s, like nothing has changed. It's the same story. So it's just so interesting to hear the same version of the story from you guys. Um, it's just I, a weird thing, like my wife and I talking, and when you're, into, when you're in an interracial relationship, you have some really deep conversations. And some conversations that you go, okay, we can really get into it. It's it's amazing because some of these white folks they've never been around black people before. Yeah, their, their first time is when they go to a Broadway show Genuinely, and they saw yeah. The Wiz or Dreamgirls or hmm. Aladdin or Lion King. This is the first time. So they say something, and then they don't know why people are offended. But the great thing about now is that the conversations are out there. We're having the conversations. Please speak, ask a question, ask a question. We would love to answer it for you. Mm -hmm. And as long as you don't get out of pocket, we won't get out of pocket. <laughs> you know what I'm and it's true. And the fun thing is we, the, the, the older ones of us, the older of the older brothers of us who can actually speak and get the words out, will keep it going. And the younger ones like Juwan are the ones that got to keep it going. They're the next generation. They're the ones that when people come to the shows, when Juwan is 28 and he's lead on Broadway and someone says something, he's like, no, you know, that's not right. Mm. You were there in 2020. You know, that's not right. You know better. You know, where we had, where we you will now better. say that, where we were like, we don't want to, you know, we don't want to mess up something or not just mess up something, but also we don't want to be perceived and then be put in a situation where now we have to defend ourselves. Sometimes it's not even about the fact that we don't want to say something. We know if we do say something, you're going to take it the wrong way. Call the police and something's going to happen. Now I got to deal with it. Mm, yeah. Mm. 
because you stepped out of pocket. But now the conversations are being had. These white folks are watching, they're looking, they're seeing, they, they, have, they have experienced it. When, when the white folks are getting pushed down in the protest, they're experiencing it for the first time. And they are saying, oh, snap, this, this is real. And we're like, yeah, this has been happening for a while. It's been real for a minute. And we haven't even discussed the racism within the gay community. Oh, yo, God. yo, I can't Jesus even. Christ. That's all y'all, baby. Go That's off, a whole different. Go off. We haven't even. Take your time. Take your we time. haven't even gone, you know, to a whole. There's all many, many other things. <laughs> go off. I mean, Chapters. And, Chapters. And she's married to a white man. You but, know, so then. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I feel in, in, I feel a connection, a special connection with everyone, obviously, but MGS is the only other one here who is a homosexual and gay, homosexual, it sounds so official, gay, and... <laughs> gay is... Use the, use the scientific word. <laughs> <laughs> like being a doctor's office. Like being a doctor's office, you homosexual. I don't know. No. Maybe. But there I find, personally, it is often so, so, you know, we live a, a life where we're too black for the gay community and unfortunately often too gay for the black community. Mm. And I, I feel like where, where do we go a lot of the time? Uh, and to, you know, especially to know even in my family, a lot of the people who I'm, I'm fighting for, I mean, would turn around if, if I wasn't related to them and would would do the same thing to me that the cops are doing to us. And it adds a, a another level, I think, of the, the hurt is hurt in, in pain is not the word, but just like a, where is where is our community, our like our community that we are fully accepted and a part of. You know? Exactly. Well, and also there gives you, there's also in the midst of this, I have to always come back to, and James will talk about it earlier, that there is, there, there, um, amidst of there's laughter, there is hope. And, and in my head, in terms of just remembering what it is that I do, what it is, how I have been brought up uh, and being able to walk in my truth that if I stay the course, then I have to be, I have to have faith that it is possible. And we've all been given this sort of gift from, uh, you know, uh, a company, organ ridiculous corporation, company, entity, that is Disney on Broadway, Disney brand, the Disney, all of it. And for them to, um, I know that there is, that stuff has moved forward. You know, we have to also acknowledge that things have moved forward as well. We still have a long way to go, True. but it's important that we acknowledge those things as well because there is no way that it hasn't moved forward where I can't think about my ancestors imagining that their some in their family would be a gay, you know, person who would be supported by a company like uh, Disney, and not only that, but for all of us, you know, the support from that from those people, and just sort of putting this kind of magnitude of a role on it, starting with James, to be able to to give that uplift uplift thing is incredible, you know. And so to be able to, uh, it's important that we also recognize that within because it's so it's so meaningful to be able to do that. I mean, they had no problem with me ever being who I was. And that that's a lot because I think that's quite interesting when you think about what quote unquote, the genie is supposed to be. And all of that was thrown out the window. It wasn't about that at all. But my personal life was me. And the fact that they accepted that and accepted my truth, you know, in that, I mean, I stood on a stage on national television in Australia where I won the, the, the Tony in Australia, the Helpman Award, and said, I can't wait to marry my husband. And literally a hush, a hush fell over Jerusalem, <laughs> in, you know what I mean, in Australia. And so like, and the fact that they just supported that, like Disney was like, yeah, 
You know what I mean? Like those kinds of things are important for all of like for it all. And and sort of just important that we can we can continue to walk. We can continue to step forward. We can continue to grow. We can continue to be empowered to be able to do what's happening right now because this is just the beginning. Yeah. And I think that we both have said it so well. The black experience is not solely trauma. The black no. experience is not solely pain. The black experience is not solely suffering. We are entitled to joy. We are entitled to light. We are entitled to fun in good times as well. Oh. And it's it's the work is making sure that you can keep that without guilt or without uh, reservation. Mm. And live fully in that while we continue to fight for the things that I feel like we shouldn't even have to fight for. But we are also fully human as everyone is, we're people. We are enti entitled to all of it. I, so I just, I love that you guys said that. Let um, there be more. <laughs> 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 Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Leslie. Hashtag Leslie. Hit it, Leslie. Oh, that's amazing. Okay. The I love y'all. I'm just going to say it. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all so much. Um, let's all get teary eyed and watch this amazing moment that happened on the Broadway. Hey, all right, big finish, big finish, bitches, big finish. Hold on. You big neighbor, you ain't never had a friend, never had a friend. You know, you know my favorite part of that is, and and, I, and I, told, I told I told I told you why everybody else had the belt. We're like Mary, Mary, and Joa said me. I was like, God, dog it, boy. That's where his, that note is where his voice sits. And I, when he did, I looked at him. I was like, that is not fair. From that performance. One love to Deontay, who yes, yes, love Deontay. Deontay. Love Deontay so yeah, Deontay. I love Deontay so much. That's my sis. I love you so much, my bro, my brother, sister. Um, but the thing that haunts me about that is that you can hear my mic wasn't down when I ran into you. And I yes. Said, oh sorry. gosh, if you if you watch if you watch it again, Juwan runs into me. You go, I I'm sorry, and you can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the, well, if you go back, there's a moment where we all have to run backstage. To, we all have to run to come back to do me. Oh. So Casey had this thing where we were all supposed to run. Well, there were the whole cast was there, oh, and there's not supposed to be five genies doing this moment. <laughs> and we ran back there, and Michael got by, and Major got by. Do y'all think about me and Joel I said? He said, "Sorry," and it's on. His mic was on, <laughs> and it was right in that register. Sorry, we were like. <laughs> It is up the it wasn't me. Oh, it tickled me so bad. Listen, like, oh. if we want to talk about FOMO, y'all left me out in the cold. That wasn't us. That wasn't <laughs> us. I'm gonna say no it right here. That call, wasn't us. No email. It was when you and I, I was you and I were on FaceTime. Yes. And like, because I FaceTimed you just randomly, and I was like, "Wait, where are you?" And you're like, "You don't oh. know." And I was like, no. "I literally, I was like, oh, you, you don't know." On. <laughs> you literally had my old costume on. Yes. And you were like, I, oh Trevor, this is your old costume. I was like, why do you have my old costume on? And What's I was like, on? you know that moment where you know that moment where you where you let the camera go back, you like, oh, they, you you don't know? <laughs> and I told the boys, I was like, they didn't tell Trevor. Didn't tell <laughs> 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 we were like, oh, nobody wanted to book me a flight. <laughs> no, you didn't want to go home tonight. It wasn't that like they was like, he's he's in London. That's that's a hell of hours ahead. <laughs> we ain't we ain't we ain't <laughs> I was crazy jet lag coming from Portland that night. I don't even remember that happening. Don't tell him you flew from somewhere far. You flew from somewhere? <laughs> Where did you uh, from uh, Damn. I didn't go over too many large bodies of, never mind. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, yes, yes, that's that is true. Yes, Trevor did not have that, but none of us got Will Smith to talk about us on Instagram. So oh, I forgot about that one. Thank yes, you. Thank, thank, just thank, forgot. thank you very much. Thank you. Forgot. Yes, I did forget about that. He gave me the love. He gave me the love. So, you know. You guys are so competitive. What? Really we're not we really listen. Really we're not completely competitive. So before I left, so oh, before shit, I man. left for London, uh, James is a going away gift because one of the things we bonded on very quickly is James and I since the '80s have both been obsessed with professional wrestling. Like, we true. love yes, professional very wrestling. Very I don't think we share that as deeply with any other genies. I think that's something no. that no. is. Mike, I, Michael thinks we're insane. I know. <laughs> No. I know Major. Good. I know Major. We've talked about it. Major doesn't mind it. Major he's like he's there. With us, but not but like see, James like, and I go. James and I go hard. James and I went. Uh, we went to. We were supposed to go to WrestleMania together this year. We went. Canceled. What was that? Three years ago. Yes, we went to we WrestleMania did. together. We went to WrestleMania together yes, when, Seth, it was, we when it was when it was in Orlando. Yeah, MJ's hometown. So uh, when I was leaving, James gave me something that, um, and he said to me, "I'm going to give you this." And I'm going to keep the other half of it. And this way, no matter where we are, we're always the tag team champions. Oh, <laughs> my heart. So the I, fun thing is, so I, my belt, I've my belt. This tag team championship belt. My belt is in, it's, it's in store. It's in story. It's in storage. My, my kids are moving out here. My kids are moving out here. But, you know, sometimes you have to leave it. Sometimes you have to leave a team and become a solo act. <laughs> and you know, bring your own, bring your own belt. So. But that's the Intercontinental Championship. But I've got the World Heavyweight Championship. Happening. Everyone. You know what's funny? You know what's funny? So do <laughs> I. It really doesn't. It really doesn't matter. Right. I've got, no, I've got that too. Seth. Sorry, Seth. These boys. Cut to Jawan and I. We just want to have a fierce cocktail. <laughs> 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 Preferably rosé move, like some rosé right. champagne. Wait, what? 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 Are you, oh, you got. He's got Spider Gwen. So just nerdness. What you're seeing, I'll Seth, is the nerdness of this group oh, of three of us. Me. The nerdness of three of us and two of us. How sophisticated they are by just wanting some wine. I'm, I'm a gamer. Of, I'm a gamer. I play World of Warcraft. Yes. We oh. Started, and we've discussed. Oh. Yeah. I've can, been sitting we, out a Wolverine's torso all night. Can we can we talk about Juwan and them having a uh, a video game system in the dressing room and playing in between scenes? Well, what? nobody calls out. I walked what? in there. I, yeah, I walked in there one time, yeah. and these fools are in the back just killing each other on Smash yeah. Brothers. And I was like, "This is what y'all do during the show in the dressing room." We're yes. playing Pokemon. And we have it Listen. in the dressing room, but we don't play the game anymore. Because <laughs> y'all missed the cue. Because y'all missed the cue, didn't you? Never missed. I have never missed a cue. <laughs> when, this, when, this, when, this, when, this, when this camera okay. turns off. <laughs> yeah, we're really going to pop. Really I've never pop. missed a cue. <laughs> I, missed a I got rid of him. I didn't like <laughs> the bragging. I didn't like the bragging. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Juwan, before you go, I begged Juwan to sing, and literally, I had a record. He was going to sing the song, and I said, I only have one recording of it. And of course, it's the perfect key because I put it literally the last time I recorded it was for Audrey McDonald. And he's like, just send it. I'm so in. This I can't wait for this. I'm go in. ahead. I'm about to be flabbergasted. I'm in. Go ahead, baby. Oh, y'all are sweet. This is why I can't Flabbergast us. This why I I'm out. Now it's pressure because y'all. There's a place for us Somewhere a place for us Peace and quiet and open air Wait for us somewhere there's a time for us Some place in time for us Time together and time to share Time to learn Time to care Find a way of a 
You still got Boo. it. <laughs> First of all, you can't be, you can't be, you can't be making people cry at the end, man. Come on, man. Come on now. You know, you know what's funny. Here's the funny thing. Twenty years from now, there's gonna be some white soprano really mad at Juwan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What about me? I sang that song. What about me? Say, no, me not me. Blame Audra. She not sang me. it first. That was baby. You better sing that song. Idleheart, I'm good. texting you right now. I forgot to text donations. I just sent a couple to you before we go so people know. Because this show is going to stay on starsinthehouse.com so people can keep donating after the show's on. So re oh, keep donating. Give, 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 give. Yes. Please. Give. I sent it to you. It's on your text. Got it, got it, got it, got it. So, uh, some anthem from NY. I know we made you cry. Thanks for giving 20 and the laughs on behalf of Black Lives Matter because you know we had a and your and gave 50. So we get nifty. Nora with 10. Charlie Brown performance. Glad you liked it. I liked it while you was on us. And Kelly with 15. You saw me in Hamilton and all the things the genie never battling. Five. Who would it be? Trevor and Major. We coming up because we here to save you. High voice Juwan. Brother got it going on. Michael James Scott. Oh, Leslie. That be he. And of course, Seth and James. James is probably dead. Seth probably killed him at least that's what he said before he left the dog out and who do i be i'm the james Monroe Igelhart, the original genie yes! <laughs> y'all still got it um you guys amazing everyone wants everyone wants you guys to come back so we'll have another reunion <laughs> and we'll um we'll bring deontay finally we'll bring deontay we'll bring deontay trevor what the hell time is it in london right now it is 2 33 in the morning in <laughs> london time listen wow. listen it's lockdown life i've been up till at least three usually 4 a.m every day because what is time when we live in lockdown <laughs> that's, that's really true. what is time <laughs> when you live in lockdown <laughs> <laughs> Lift every voice. <laughs> the sad part is he's gonna have us know that the next time we all come. Right, right, right. You gotta cut. You're gonna have us pre-tape a five-part harmony on. Exactly. Say that out loud. Yes, please. Yeah. Oh, see, you didn't mess up. You messed up. I messed up now. See. Seth, thank you for having. Thank, thank you for having. Thank you, Seth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. Thank you. Us on and chatting. Yes. And not being wonderful. afraid. And not being afraid of the talk. Yes. Thank I you. loved it, man. Yes, it was that. amazing. And everyone the else conversation's key. Comments. Thanks. Yeah. I'm gonna run the I'm gonna run the end credits. I don't know what usually I play something. I don't know what the hell I'm gonna play. So here's end credits. Um oh, this is for Juwan. Ah! Yes. <laughs> what is it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> that shit is too high. He can play anything. No, hey, yeah, Seth is a genius. Seth plays anything. Right? Yes. Yeah. That's not true, but there thank you. There are people who have moments of genius, but Seth has it all the time. That's true. It's really Seth sad. lives in the genius. He did. Lift every ball. <laughs> <laughs> and, and broadcast. Um, 